רם, לפני שאני מתחיל, before I start, anyone prefers English over So it took me a lot of time to come here. I'm working in the Crimea building and as well as the elevators were pretty fun. So I'm Liad. I'm working in SAP, previously in Gigia, which was acquired by SAP two years ago. Um, and uh, I'll uh, talk about uh, our journey to uh, China. Um, I'll uh, discuss with one slide just uh, about uh, what we do, just to give you some background, and then uh, we will continue with uh, everything else from Alibaba. Uh, so in very high level, we have uh, two pillars. The identity management, uh, profile, and consent. Those are the three main products. And basically, we provide uh, login and uh, registration services to uh, very big customers uh, like uh, Bose, ISOs, and many others. And uh, we manage uh, 1.7 billion identities. Identities are actual uh, users, real, unique users in the world. So it's uh, something like 25% of the population uh, in our databases. Um, and you can see uh, many other uh, metrics that we measure, all in uh, billions. Uh, some of them are uh, per month. Uh, so we have a very um, uh, high uh, capacity and uh, a lot of uh, transactions coming in. Um, and the data center in Alibaba is um, I think the, the smallest one that we have, but it's still uh, uh, pretty big. Um, so just for the agenda, um, I'll start with uh, what uh, we wanted to achieve uh, when uh, we uh, went to China, what we checked, how we selected Alibaba. Uh, I'll explain about our deployment show our architecture, and then uh, uh, talk about very important uh, tips and tricks uh, when we go with uh, Alibaba. Some of them uh, we learned in the old way, and it's very good to be familiar with them uh, before we start. Um, OK, so why going with Alibaba? Um, it was very easy for us to uh, go with other vendors that we were already working with. Um, the other known uh, vendors that uh, are available, I'm sure that you know the names. Um, and we were not even too familiar with uh, Alibaba at the time. I, I was actually pretty surprised to see that uh, they have data centers uh, outside of China. I was uh, sure that they only exist China back then, and um, I think that one of the main things that uh, initially attract, attracted me uh, to go with Alibaba um, was uh, the fact that, uh, first of all, you, you need uh, something called ICP in order to work with uh, any hosting facility in China. And I'll discuss it uh, in a more uh, deeper level later, but basically it's, it's very convenient and easy to uh, use ICP with uh, Alibaba and they help you get it very fast. Um, and they also let you start without the ICP. So basically you can get an account and start working there and uh, do the test and everything that you need without even having the ICP, which is a very basic thing in order to work, work in China. Uh, from region and availability zone perspective, I think that they are the biggest uh, cloud vendor uh, that exists in the market. Um, sales and technical people are very, very responsive. Uh, you, you might be familiar with it uh, from other cloud vendors, and uh, Alibaba put 
much said. And the last thing uh, is the platform, which is uh, also very mature and resilient, like all the other cloud vendors. So uh, no disadvantages at all. About our deployment, so uh, th this is uh, a brief of uh, different uh, open sources that we work with in our environment. Uh, all of them are uh, installed and managed uh, by our uh, technical people. Basically, we don't uh, we prefer not to use uh, vendor-specific uh, service because we work with different uh, cloud vendors and also in some locations uh, we, we manage it ourselves with uh, OpenStack uh, because no class, uh, cloud provider exists in that area, for example in Russia, there isn't any cloud vendor available. So we had to build our own data center and uh, manage everything ourselves and then that's why we uh, to go with our own uh, setup and installation. Um, so in China, we have about 400 servers. And as mentioned, this is one of our smallest data centers, but still have a couple of hundred servers. We are working in two regions. Uh, we have four availability zones, and we use uh, several different uh, Alibaba services. All of them are uh, pretty basic. bit about the architecture. Um, so first of all, in the, the first tier is a um, global traffic manager. We use a couple of vendors. Um, they publish uh, our external IP addresses, which leads to the front and the load balances. And basically, um, we, we can work in any number of availability zones. Um, the traffic, uh, it doesn't really matter to which <coughs> availability zone the traffic will actually reach. Everything is available from everywhere. And we use that uh, topology in order to get uh, higher, uh, higher availability and resiliency. Um, and also in order to be able to uh, do transparent uh, deployments, transparent upgrades, uh, so basically, if a full availability zone goes down, we are up. Uh, and this is the way that we work basically everywhere. Um, in Alibaba, but also in uh, any other solution that we use. Um, one of the very important things uh, when you work uh, with a data center in China, but also manage it and connect to it from outside of China, this component over here. It's called Express Connect. I'll uh, discuss it uh, also a bit later uh, uh, broadly. Basically, it allows you to uh, manage all the services without the issues that you usually see in China. So basically, wh when you connect from Israel to something in China, you will most likely uh, face uh, packet loss, latency, many issues. When you use the Express Connect, you don't <coughs> see those. And um, I'm pretty sure that you can imagine <coughs> what the reason for it. I can't uh, say it uh, uh, explicitly, but uh, you, you can imagine how that works. Basically, it's connecting between two different Alibaba uh, regions, and you connect uh, everything else to the region outside of Alibaba, China, and from there you can reach uh, China without any issue. Okay, so first, uh, about the ICP. First of all, there, there are two uh, options. One is the filing, and the second one is the license. The difference, uh, filing is for a non-commercial organization, basically when you don't get a fee for your services. 
And the license is when you actually uh, make a profit. So I, I guess that for most uh, people here, if not everyone, you will need the license. In order to get ICP license, there are very restrictive uh, requirements. One of them, for example, is to have an entity in China. So if your company doesn't work in China, you actually need to establish another entity. You need to have an office over there, at least a virtual office. You need to have uh, people living in China that can represent you, and if there is an issue, the government needs to have someone in China that they can knock on his door and do something. <laughs> so, uh, so all of that are the very minimal requirements. In addition to all of that, the whole process can take uh, many months, um, something like the NAFA. Uh, one more thing is that the ICP is also vendor specific. So, for example, if you work with Alibaba, you need to tell them, I need the ICP for Alibaba. You can't just move to a different vendor without changing. One of the very important options is to use a third party. We are using a company called CloudCamp. Uh, they work with the Alibaba. I think that even Alibaba owns a part of it. And basically, you can get the ICP through them without all of the requirements that I mentioned. So you don't really need to have an entity. You don't really need to have people in China. Yeah. You pay them a, a fee and not uh, too expensive. And basically, they get the ICP and run it under your name. And you get the ICP. When you have an ICP, you actually have an ICP number that you need to put on all of uh, the pages in China. So that they uh, get that for you, and it's uh, done very quickly. So in a matter of weeks, you can actually have it. So that, that's uh, very important things to know, that you don't really need to do all of those requirements in order to get the ICP and start working. Next thing is the Express Connect that I've uh, mentioned earlier. Um, when we started working with Alibaba, we didn't use it. We didn't know about it, and we basically established side-to-side, um, side, high-to-stack VPN tunnels directly to uh, uh, China from all of the locations, the offices, the data centers. It didn't work. Every couple of hours, in the good case, we had uh, packet loss, we had uh, latency, we, we just couldn't manage, we, we couldn't do anything. Then we discovered that there is a, a product called Express Connect that basically allows you to connect everything to a different region, use the Express Connect from that different region of Alibaba to China, and this uh, overcomes all of those issues. Um, and there are many uh, use cases uh, that explain that. And basically, you get the stability and reliability, and you can choose the actual bandwidth that you want to use. Uh, I believe that it starts from uh, 10 uh, megabit, uh, but you can go to even, uh, I'm not sure if uh, giga, but very big uh, capacity. Next thing is the CDN. Uh, Alibaba has its own CDN. Uh, there are uh, several benefits that are described here. Um, there are two types of CDN, um, either standard or dynamic, it depends on the content that you want to use. And uh, at least for us, one of the important things was that uh, it allows you um, to use ICP uh, from a different vendor. I explained that basically you need to assign the ICP to a vendor. With the ICP, you don't need to do it. So in our case, we are hosting uh, customer domains. Some of our customers are actually pointing their traffic, their domain, to our service. 
And if we wouldn't use the ICP, they will actually need to host their uh, deployment in Alibaba, otherwise it wouldn't work because their ICP would be with another vendor and it would not be really valid. With the ICP, uh, they don't care. Uh, they just need to verify that there is a valid ICP in place, and that's it. So if you have this use case, remember that the CDN can help you. And in addition, you also get a lot of benefits uh, of uh, uh, better uh, and faster uh, uh, response time for all your code. Next one is the region. Uh, I believe that now Alibaba has eight different regions. It's important to know that not all of them are the same. In some cases, um, the network connectivity will be different. In uh, some cases, the number of availability zones will be different. In other cases, the type of uh, servers and the services available in that region will be different. So it's very important uh, uh, to know what you want to use and make sure that it's actually uh, available in the region that you want to work with. And we initially started in Beijing and discovered that it didn't have everything that we need and therefore we also established uh, uh, an environment in Shanghai. Uh, so it, it can help you save some time if you do that investigation from the beginning. Next one is the billing. Um, initially, I, I created the account uh, back in 2016. Um, I, I was uh, expecting that it will be something uh, that will just uh, serve me and without any relation to the entire company. But it turns out that when you create the first account, the admin account, some of the information is actually used for the whole company and are not even possible to change. For example, um, the country that you put, I put Israel, it actually uh, makes it uh, built based on it. So if it's important for you, and in our case, at least now in SAP, it's important that the invoices will be sent to uh, the American entity. Uh, it didn't work in the beginning. When you put Israel, it's actually coming from Singapore, and that was an issue. So in order to overcome it, we opened a master account only for that purpose, and assigned that master account to US, and binded the other account to that master account. So in order to uh, possibly overcome this, just remember that the details that you put in the beginning, at least back then, were important, so take that into account. Uh, and you also have the option to uh, either uh, use the credit card or get uh, invoice based on the uh, actual uh, monthly charge. So you, you can choose that as well, especially if you are uh, big company that has uh, high spend. Last thing is the Alibaba entity itself. I'm not sure if you're aware, but there are actually two different entities for Alibaba. One is uh, China domestic, and another one is the international. From the look and feel, like the camera there, they're, they're pretty much the same. You will see in the Chinese portal, uh, the same thing in Ch uh, Chinese. International, same thing in English. Everything should be the same. But there are actually, at least for us, a big difference. When uh, we, we are working with the international, and uh, the purpose was to be able to serve uh, global customers. So for example, uh, we have customers that are using our US and European and Australian data centers. They also want to use the Chinese data center. So that wasn't an issue. But for customers that are only working in China, so 
domestically in China, they actually cannot work with us when we work with the international entity uh, because of some regulations that, uh, that they need to work with the Chinese entity. So that's also very important for you to know that if um, at least some of your customers are only working in China, you should take that into account. And uh, even though I believe that behind the hood it's, it's the exact same thing, you can't simply move from the international to the Chinese domestic. You actually need to reestablish everything. There isn't any easy way to move things. So that, that's a very important thing to be aware of when you actually uh, establish your deployment. Um, so that, that's pretty much uh, everything uh, I wanted to talk about. And uh, then now that there is a uh, room for uh, questions. Yeah. I have uh, two questions, please. Uh, one question is, uh, do they also have the, the calculator that uh, you can paper uh, a solution that best suits you and then you can increase or decrease on demand? Um, on the price? Yes, we, we have a calculator. Yeah. Mm. Similar to the AWS simple monthly calculator, I think. Yeah. Yeah, we have, we have something similar. All right. And the uh, second question is in terms of what you just mentioned, the, the separation between international and uh, supposed national, um, would, would there be a situation where Chinese companies want to, that are Chinese nationals, but they want to interact with companies outside. What would be the case? Uh, would you still need to use a Chinese version of the card? Well, but basically the difference would be that uh, if the customer, uh, in our case, we, we are uh, serving uh, customers that have end users, for example, ASOS uh, have many uh, shoppers uh, around the world, but let, let's say that it's a domestic company in China that only sells to Chinese people. In this case, uh, that they would want to use the domestic uh, uh, site, but if uh, they are working with uh, people around the globe, they would want to use the international site. Even if they are based in China? Yeah. So that, that would be the difference. And basically, I, I believe that the best thing would be to actually do it in, in both, <laughs> even though it's not very efficient. Is there an impact on what is double the pricing? Do we have to yep. double the impact? From a cost perspective, of course, it's not uh, the, the best way to do it. But in the first place, the reason that we established uh, the data center in Alibaba in China was because of the Chinese regulation. I mean, we, we didn't feel a need to do it unless the, um, only because of the regulation that requires that all of the Chinese uh, um, citizens' data will remain inside of China. The same thing in Russia and other locations, so only because of the data locality, that's the only reason that we established the data, the data center in China in the first place. Anything else? Okay, thank you.